need to work out uh, first and decide what stage you are as a business and what market you're facing because an enterprise sales guy is a different guy from a consumer web guy focusing on SEM marketing. And really in a startup though, there's only two classes of people that you need to hire or uh, we'll have a co-founder in. And it's people that can sell and people that can build product. If they fall outside of that, they're overhead and they're not really contributing to the success of the startup in the short term. So your startup's gonna die in six months. What's gonna make it succeed past that six months? It's people that are selling a product, building a product, and that's how you need to sort of prioritize all the types of hires. Um, in terms of people with their backgrounds, like having come from a corporate background, I spent about four years at PricewaterhouseCoopers, and then I spent two years working at a startup and I was very actively mentored by the CEO to sort of unlearn what I'd learned at PwC because the skills that make you successful in a big corporate environment are the same skills that kill a startup. And an example of that would be analytical skills. If you work in professional services or banking, you're taught and trained to think very analytically because you're defending a revenue stream and you're trying to understand it. In a startup, you're trying to create a revenue stream and by analyzing things, you're actually dissecting things so much that you're killing any creative ideas that can sort of build the revenue uh, it's a tough one. I mean, I always say aim as absolutely high as you can. Uh, a lot of times people go to their, their friends, they go to who they have access to. Uh, but I, I think everybody, there's some amazing specialist people who can really help you. Uh, and I think it goes back a little bit again to accountability. Um, you want you want someone who can call, call your bluff. Um, one advantage of an advisor is they're not in the trenches with you every day. So they can beat you over the head if you're losing focus or if you're, if you're not getting the, the, the job done. Um, I think it's really important that they have a, they have a vested interest. Don't just get their name on a, on, a, on a presentation. I've seen it so many times, like here's our list of advisors and you know, it, unless they've either put money in or are spending a day a week with you, then they're, they're just a name on a, on a presentation. So two sources for us have been uh, referrals and um, just online advertising. I think, uh, uh, surprisingly, you can put an ad for very senior positions, whether it be vice presidents or what have you, on LinkedIn and get some phenomenal resumes. Um, another company I was advising, we actually even advertised for a CEO on LinkedIn and got some amazing people. They would just blow your socks off, people who have sold companies and gone public or, or, or what have you, who just like, oh, that's interesting, I'll inquire, and then that's just the start of the conversation. From there, you can pitch them and, and so forth. But uh, um, but yeah, we, we've had a lot of success with just uh, online advertising and um, and then working networks, you know, your advisors who might be interested in this. Uh, every opportunity is obviously an opportunity for improvement. Even if you find A-class people, don't abdicate responsibility. Uh, don't expect just because they've done it five times before that you can just put them in a role, leave them in a room for three months, come back and go, wow, they've just made an amazing product. Or because um, alignment of values is great, but you've got to keep keep doing it. Alignment of vision is a is a, almost a daily task, um, and especially uh, a lot of developers think I've, I'm scared of hell of selling, so I'll just hire a salesperson to do it for me. Um, typically, unless you've sold it, they won't they won't. It's hard to find people who actually work out how to sell your product. It can be a very different different thing. So um, even if they're A-class, think about training and developing them, spend time with them. Um, you really don't abdicate responsibility for that. Hiring is something that you work on probably your whole career. Uh, I would st I rank myself a three out of 10, and I realized I was a zero out of 10 when I got here. And I've got a long way to go, but I'm starting to get better. This, uh, just a quick tip, there's a uh, a process called top grading that a lot of uh, the private equity firms use. Uh, you can read top grading for sales, top grading for whatever, uh, top grading for CEOs if, if you want to go down that direction. Um, the kind of the bubblegum version, that's called Who, uh, which is written by the same group of people. These are consultants that do hiring for private equity firms. Uh, so I'd use that. Get used to doing eight hour interviews of people. You really need to get underneath them. Uh, top grading takes the approach of, so tell us about high school. What were the subjects that interest you? And then go from high school onwards instead of reverse backwards. Uh, so you really get a sense for this person's life story. The, the best types of entre uh, people to hire in a startup are entrepreneurs themselves. They also are the hardest people to manage and the only way to do that is by knowing that they're going to leave eventually, they're probably going to start their own thing, and helping them understand that you're helping them contribute to their future vision in life, um, and you've got a lease on them, which I think is the other major point with all employees. You don't own any resource or talent. You simply have a lease and access to it. And once you get them in the door, um, let's just assume that they 
are high quality. You need to spend the rest of your job trying to retain them. And you need to always be paranoid that you're going to be losing them and always be thinking about ways of trying to keep them motivated. So the, uh, creative control is something I've learned and how I manage to motivate 50 people to work for me for free on Startup Bus. But I think there's other ways that will contribute to the fact that you're always listening to what really drives and motivates that individual and always building <coughs> solutions around that. And it doesn't mean more salary. It might mean buying them a screen that's you know 30 inches or, uh, or giving them um, a day off a week to do whatever they want to learn it. In the US, it's much more culturally to say you're fired. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, no, yeah, it's true. it is. You know, you can just say it. You're fired. I just, sorry. There's not as much stigma in America about being fired. And the employment's no. at will. And it's, yeah. it, the, the law allows it, the culture allows it. You can say it if you want to in the first hour. That would be, <laughs> for the first hour, you realize a mistake, and I have done that once. A lot of conflict happens through communication styles. Some people are big picture thinking, uh, other people are very detail orientated. And you can get frustrated with an employee just because they have a different way of thinking. And you need to understand, is that really just a clash with yourself and your own personality? And that's actually a good thing. You need people around you that are different. But when you actually know it's an employee that isn't suited for you, and that's, I mean, the simple way to measure that is just their productivity. They just don't do any work. They're doing hours work a day, real work a day. Um, I think there's two approaches, I think, uh, and I've, I've definitely tried this. The one is that you just got to fire people immediately because they're detrimental to the rest of the team, especially the smaller the team that has a bigger impact than everyone else. People get resentments. That person might have an attitude problem that leaks onto other people, and you, they're just a bad egg that you need to get rid of as soon as possible. But a lot of times you find people are ineffective over a longer term. So what I've seen is people that are really good in the first year and the second year, they're actually really bad. Um, people that just sort of burn out themselves or they just don't, aren't as motivated anymore. And they're, they're great employees, but now it's time for them to move on. And the best thing to do there is to phase them out.